Guys, welcome to Civitai Office Hours. My name is Tyler. I do AI animation and video here at Civitai, as well as manage and run all of the Civitai social media. And today I got a really special one for you guys today. This is going to be more or less a tutorial slash walkthrough of some brand new um, animate diff workflows that I released on my Civitai profile today. Um, I am going to drop the links for both of them in both of the Twitch and the Discord chats right now. So we are all on the same page and you can follow along if you like. Um, both of these workflows are essentially the same thing. However, one is based on animate lcm and the other one is based on animate diff v3 we're going to go over what they do and i will show you the differences in quality between the two so you can decide which one is better for you if you are um limited on vram and you're not working with like 24 gigs of vram you're going to want to just use the LCM workflow. And that's what we're gonna go through on stream because it generates things super, super fast. And that is always really good when I'm doing stuff live with you guys. So we're gonna walk through this. I don't think it's gonna take me that long to actually go through and explain um, the workflow and how to use it. So after that, I am going to ask you guys to throw some images my way so we can get some examples going. Um, for this workflow, you're going to need a few things. So let me tell you what we're doing here. So we are going over this guy right here. The JBoogs and the Machine Learners Animate LCM Subject and Background Isolation via Invert Mask. It is video to video. And we have the high res fix in the workflow as well. That is definitely a mouthful. But let me show you guys how not intimidating it actually is. So. And before we, before we even kick things off, let me just show you guys what kind of spawned all of this. Let me get my OBS back. Um, what spawned all of this was really that I posted this video on the Civitai social media page, and this video got a really great response. And a lot of people wanted to know how I did this. So um, I re refined the workflow a little bit. A lot of people helped me with this and I was banging my head against the wall for like two weekends and those people are mentioned in the description of the workflow on the profile. When you go to download it, make sure you go check them all out on Instagram. This is the video. This is Animate Diff V3. Okay, so this is the one that the generation time is going to take longer, but if you have the VRAM, the quality will be higher and the movements will be a little less sticky. That's something that I've really noticed. That's um, a big difference between full Animate Diff V3 and Animate LCM is that same control nets, everything equal. The movements in, from LCM, as far as it like tracing people and whatnot, it can feel just a little bit stickier than v3 and that's just like the best way i could describe the feeling i get from seeing the videos so this is what the video looked like coming out of animate diff v3 this is the exact same video with the same ip adapter images out of animate lcm it still looks super dope it feels like there's a bit more texture to it if you will and it's just a it, it's just a preference thing so, with that being said, let's go to the beginning and let's start going through this. So, just a heads up, when you do download the workflow from my Civitai profile and you drop it into um, your comfy UI for the first time, you might see nothing but gray and you might be like, what, what, what is, what, where's the workflow? Um, my bad. I didn't realize that Comfy has like a center place and it's really annoying to like move all the nodes and groups manually. 
So all you have to do when you drop the workflow into your comfy UI is zoom out with your mouse wheel and you'll see the workflow like somewhere further up on the screen and then you can just kind of recenter yourself. Sorry. Feel free to move those nodes back for yourself if you want them to be centered. Just a, a word of caution there. there. It's not an empty workflow, I promise. So a lot of this might be kind of um, stuff we went over before. It will be stuff we went over before, but I think that it's good to review it with everyone. We have a lot of first time people in here. So we're gonna go through beginning to end and discord guys, if you have any questions along the way, feel free to ask, it's what I'm here for. So all these groups in the workflow are labeled one, two, three, in the order of operation, I feel you should kind of work through them and look at them. And I like making everything as organized and as simple and condensed as possible. And I've really tried to eliminate anything here that is not needed, period. So in box one, you have your video source and your resolution. Now, these things are already preset to you to the resolutions I run all of my videos at. So if you see any videos on the Civitai social media page or on my personal Instagram, this is the resolution I'm running everything. There's no trickery there. So everything is being ran at 521 by 896, and that is going to be our low res. Now, you have your video loader right beneath that. Choose video to load. You go ahead, you find your file. Um, your frame load cap is how many frames you want it to render. So if I have 50, that means it's only going to render 50 frames out of video. If you change that to zero, it's going to render the entire video. Beneath that, we have our LoRa stacker, which right now I have it set to allowing you to have five LoRas in there. So load a LoRa if you want. Um, that is entirely up to you. I tend to only use one or two, if that, ever since the IP adapter. In box two, you have your model slash your animate diff loader. Um, this is where you're going to select what model you would like to use. For the LCM workflow, I really recommend the Photon LCM model. I have noticed that other people have been starting to make LCM versions of the full um, 1.5 models on Civitai, so that's really great. I haven't tested too many of them, but Photon LCM is like chef's kiss. Machine Delusions, who was our special guest last week, did a really great job on that. If you use this workflow, you're going to want to use the LCM model. You're also going to want to make sure you grab the Stable Diffusion 1.5 LCM LoRa. That will really help with this workflow and it will allow you to run your video at a very low CFG um, so that you can keep the generations moving really, really quickly. That's really the benefit of this workflow. So since the Photon LCM model has the LCM LoRa built into it, we're running the LCM LoRa at only 0.18. And I'll show you why when we get to the case sampler. If you're using a normal Stable Diffusion 1.5 model, which you totally can with this workflow, you're going to want to use the LCM LoRa at a strength of one. Then we have your Animate Diff Motion LoRas, which you can use if you want. Um, some The ones that will work are the Motion LoRas that were trained on LCM. So like this Shatter Motion LoRa by Pixel Pusher was trained on LCM. This will work and it will affect our videos if we wanted to. Um, I only use them in certain situations. Right now, this is set to a strength of zero. You're not really going to want to change anything in your Animate Diff Loader, but you want to make sure you have the Animate LCM Motion Model in this right here. I just didn't change the name of mine. Um, when I download the file, but this is the Animate LCM motion model. If you don't have that, it's not going to work as intended. Group three, these yellow boxes right here, are your control nets. 
they are all separated into their own little individual group boxes and they all have these fast bypassers in them so you can quickly turn off and on the control nets that you would like to use for your video most of the time i have lately found myself using um depth as well as open pose and combining it with the control gif control net which really just like smooths everything out tremendously so mess around with the combinations um cats cats asked in discord how do you toggle on and off the nodes is there a hotkey um i gave you the hotkey so normally you would have to right click and click bypass but if you put these fast bypasser nodes in the groups um they actually just turn the entire groups in the buttons so boom and that means they're bypassed right there dever also pointed out that the um shortcut is control b to bypass a single node if you don't want to right click so you have a couple different options there um the fast bypassers are my favorite option and it's what i i put them everywhere in a group where i might not always use it so definitely utilize those so that's number three you have your control nets the values that are going to be set in there for you all um are the values that i tend to use if I'm trying to use depth and open pose, which is the combination I like because it allows you to get the most creative results that are true to the style you want, even if it takes away a little bit of the motion. Um, the only thing I might alter is cranking up depth, thanks to um, Militant Hitchhiker a few weeks ago, who kind of who told me like cr try cranking that up to 0.6, worked wonders, kept the style real heavy. So. That's something to keep in mind if you're having issues with movement. And now we're getting into the magic sauce of this new workflow because up to this point, um, everything has kind of been pretty standard for what all the workflows I've used have looked like. So this workflow is utilizing two separate IP adapters. And you're going to see that IP adapter number one is specifically for your subject or your character. IP adapter number two is specifically for your background. So ideally, you're using images in IP adapter number two that don't have people in them. IP adapter number one, the, mo the more isolated you can get your character in the image or the more of the image the character is actually taking up, the better. And I've, I've, I've actually done, um test with them where I've taken like images I've generated of characters, threw it into Photoshop, did a select subject, pulled the character out, just slapped the character on a black or white background. And that actually made the style of the character come out more than when I use the full generated image with the character in it. So that is, the, is, is the difference. Oh, uh, sorry was to that? interrupt you, but is, is no, no. the difference the, the model you use? The, the uh, IP for... adapter model? Uh, no, no, no. I'm going to explain the difference right now and what, what is doing this. Okay. So, because if you remember, my workflow up to this point was four IP adapter images. We would use two for the background, two for the model, and then we would tell it what we wanted in the prompt. That's what we've been doing. This is the next, this is like, we're taking that a step further so we have even more control over it because with all the randomness that AI gives us, if we can wrangle that in and just like figure out how to control it, then it becomes even more powerful. So in the bottom of your first IP adapter box, there is another load video node. In this load video node, you are going to upload an alpha mask. Now, I did not build this workflow to pull the mask for you. You're going to have to do that yourself. There are plenty of workflows. Um, Militant Hitchhiker has a workflow that I have linked on one of my other resource pages, and I'll link it to this one after the stream as well, that will actually allow you to throw your video into it, and it'll give you all the control net preprocessors as videos for your video, including the alpha mask. 
you want this white, you want your subject to be white on a black background. This is what you need to make this workflow work. Uh, thank you, Cats. I'm actually going to, going to copy this link and post it in Twitch for people as well. Um, this is the Comfy UI Control Net Video Builder with masking. So that link, Twitch, is a very good alternative to having to do what I do just because I'm a bit of a masochist and I enjoy doing it. But I, I personally go in and I mask these things out in After Effects using the Roto Brush myself. But if you just want to do a quick, easy AI mask, use that workflow in that link that I just sent. So, the, Erotaku, don't you dare. <laughs> I see what you did there. I see what you did there. <laughs> so, um, character, your subject has to be white. Okay, now, this video combine node right here, okay, this video combine node plugs into a convert image to mask. And this plugs into, oh wait, sorry, nope, boom, 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 boom. convert image to mask. Yeah, th and this is plugging into the resize mask. So shout out to Kijai from the Animate Diff Banadoko server. He helped me figure this out because I, at first, it was killing me, man. I spent an entire day on this because I had this all set up and it worked for like 10 frames or 20 frames. And then I would do more and I would instantly get a CUDA error. And it was driving me crazy and i knew there had to be a way um kijai pulled my workflow apart and he was like here you go and i just through a kind of process of elimination i figured out that the resize mask which is something he recommended is what did the trick so this node is resizing this video um the width and the height are inconsequential as long as the aspect ratio is the same as the mask and as your original video. So in this case, it would be nine by 16. So I just brought the width and the height down one step from what we have it at here in the beginning. So if I were you, I just wouldn't even touch these numbers. These numbers will work fine. This mask is then being inverted via a invert mask node for the background. So it's taking the white on black alpha mask video, flipping it. So for the background IP adapter, it's actually doing the, the opposite. So the character is black, the background is white. Because Irotaku, we are all about quality in AI. So this, it's inverting your mask, which means these two images, your background images, are getting applied, but in reverse. So only to your background. And this is this this is the sauce, man. Everything else from there is pretty um is is pretty straightforward. But for the IP adapters, just to reiterate, you have um your prepare image for clip vision node, where if you want it to crop into a specific part of your image, um you can select that right here. I tend to leave it on pad. I do know that you'll get a little bit higher quality if you use the crop. The pad just makes it look at the entire image, so I tend to just leave it there. Um, your IP adapter, you're going to want to make sure that you have the SD 1.5 um, clip vision model, as well as the IP adapter plus SD 1.5 model for your load IP adapter model. You can find both of these on the IP adapter plus GitHub page. If you just Google that IP adapter plus GitHub models, you will find those. Now, moving on, we have our control net stack and our free you don't mind the typo. You're not doing anything there. Those are just connectors. In group five, we have our prompt. Um, this is still the same. We have our positive prompt. Everything in the pretext box will come before your prompt, and everything in the app text box will come after your prompt. 
it's just how I like setting all my stuff up in case I do decide I want to prompt travel. Uh, one second, pausing real quick. Dever shared the IP adapter plus GitHub page. So Twitch, um, in case any of you actively need that and need to download the IP adapter models, they are all in that link. Thank you, Dever. And then you have your negative prompt in the red box on the bottom. And this is where any of your negative embeddings and just the overall things you don't want to see in your video go. In group six, we have our case sampler. Now, this one, I definitely wouldn't change anything in it. You can mess around with your steps and your CFG, but everything in here is set up specifically to work with um, Animate LCM so you can get the fastest generations that you possibly can. So don't touch too much. The only things that I ever mess around with really are the CFG. Our CFG here is set to one when you're using LCM so we can get the full benefits of it being as um, fast as possible. We want to build kind of everything we're doing around the CFG being one. Now, that CFG is set to one because we're actually utilizing the LCM LoRa over here to cover some of that quality difference. Whereas if we didn't have the LoRa and we ran it at 1.8, then um, we would get higher quality. Now, wait, we already have one issue coming through. Okay. Okay, uh, the face swapper, the face swapper. So I'm going to talk about this um, in just a second when we get there because we have, thanks to um, some friends from another Discord server, uh, one is actually in here right now, Patches Flows, actually figured out the fix for Reactor and getting the face swapper installed. And it's, it's a little bit of a hurdle. If you don't want to do it, no big deal but we'll go over that in a second. Let's keep these in order to keep it simple. So yes, your case sampler, mess with your CFG, find the quality that you like. Um, below that, we have our high res fix, which is our upscaler. Now, when you open the workflow for the first time, the latent upscaler will probably be set to the NN latent upscaler. Um, this one, this upscaler is amazing. It denoises really well, and it's just like the quality is really good. That being said, if you're running a high frame count, you'll probably get a CUDA error with this one, and you'll have to dial back your upscale buy. So to bypass that CUDA error, what I've been doing just to keep it simple for myself, switch this to buy linear. I keep my upscale buy just to 1.5. And that will give me a clean 768 by 1344 render out of this workflow at the end of it all. It doesn't take very long to upscale it at all. And then from there, I can um, just do like the last leg of the upscale in Topaz or something. And the quality comes out perfect for social media to the full 1080 by 1920. We're going to disable the upscaler for now. So, okay. The reactor face swapper. If you are unable to install the reactor face swapper as a node from your comfy UI manager, when you get the error, you are going, it's because you have to install um, Visual Studio Code and C++. You need those two things to be able to run reactor. You need VS Visual Code 2022. VS Code 2022 or later and um, C++. If you do not have those two things installed, Reactor will not install on your system. So that's been the big linchpin for everyone. And Chris.exe coming through clutch for everyone. Let me actually um, save this image right here. And can I put an image in Twitch? Is that a thing? Am I able to do that? No, you cannot do that. No, you can't do that. Oh, so that's a bummer. But let me just show you guys on my screen here real quick since um, 
maybe someone on Twitch wants to screenshot this or something. Um, ah, no, come back. Sorry, give me a second. Okay. Uh, this right here is from the Reactor GitHub page. So this is what you have to do to be able to install the Reactor node via your Comfy Manager. I'm going to leave that there for a second. This will be posted on YouTube. You can pause it and go read this. And five, four, three, two, one, boom. That's going to be a little bit of a hurdle that you guys are going to have to kind of get over if you want to use Reactor. But um, it's we at least know now what the issue this whole time has been, and it's that you need to install VS Code and C++ and just have some of their dependency stuff installed and going on. Um, I haven't really been using Reactor that much unless I do like a collaboration with someone and they're very specific about their face, but it is a nice feature to be able to have. It's usually bypassed for me though. So, you know, do what you want with that. That is how you fix it. Rewind the video, go install the stuff, and then you should be good. And then we have our video combine, our output. Um, this is something that is in the v3 version that i uploaded but i left it disconnected here because i realized when i uploaded the workflow it wasn't connected and i wanted to show you guys how to connect it if you wanted to so um to be to have this node and to be able to use it you need to install mikey nodes from your um comfy ui manager and basically what this does is it allows you to easily save your outputs into custom folders in your output directory instead of just having like the all your all your mp4s or um quicktime files and pngs just like mashed together in a sea of nonsense that eventually becomes like such a hassle to clean that you just don't clean it so to install this node um well one you have to you have to install the mikey nodes and then once you get this file name prefix node, all you would do is just open up, search for, sorry, boom, open up, I type in file name and you'll see it right there. File name prefix, boom. What you wanna do in your video combine, if you're using the LCM version, is right click your video combine node and convert your file name prefix to input. And then you're going to simply hook up your file name prefix to the file name prefix node. And that should be it. And then when you generate the video, um, see, so I have the date and the date directory turned off because I don't really like looking at folders with names that are just numbers. Um, this custom directory's name is Civitai Twitch. And then the custom text is going to say Civitai Twitch LCM on all the files. So that is it. Creepy guy, I'm sorry if any of that was complicated. All of this stuff tends to be complicated at some point. But luckily, hopefully, I can make the blow just a little less easier for everyone by having gone through all the complicated stuff and having people much smarter than myself helped me do it so that I can then relate some of this to you guys. So with that being said, let's make something cool for the next 30 minutes or so. Um, yeah, man, I, I, I hope you guys- Before that hope... real quick, how do you enable the RAM and CPU usage on the actual comfy um, block there? I swear that that just happened when I um updated my comfy UI and my comfy UI manager. My understanding is that one is an add-on called Crystals, C R Y S T O O L S. Uh, is that manager. what it is? Uh, I believe so. 
Yeah, because I've updated my comfy for a few times, and I still don't have that, so... Yeah, yeah, just go get Crystals. It's like a one-click, easy install in the manager. C-R-Y-S-T-O-O-L-S. One word. I appreciate that, man. Boom. Okay. Okay, yeah, I have that installed. So, right there, guys, uh, for those of you that wanted to know where these little bars came from, sorry, I totally thought that that just happened, so... My bad. Thank you, Patches, and thank you, Chris. So, um, yeah, so in your Comfy Manager, it's called Chris Tools, C-R-Y-S-T-O-O-L-S. Install that, restart your Comfy, and then those things should just be there. Thank you, guys. Um, so, let's remix this video. Um, what I need from you guys are some characters and some backgrounds. Discord. And to, like, really demonstrate the strength here, it would be really dope to, to thank you, Inglesine can always count on you. It would be really dope to um, mishmash some characters with, like, completely different backgrounds. So that's what we're trying to do. It doesn't even necessarily have to, like, come out being, like, the coolest thing, but we, um, we want to, to really showcase how strong this thing is. Boom. Dever, I like it. Got Rocket Woman on the rocket. Don't 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 negate the background images though. Hit hit me with some with some landscapes or some see so like on this astronaut video, um I created this this like origami rendering of I just put in like the galaxy and space and stuff and it gave me this really cool multicolored thing and then when it went on the video it just came out so dope man. Um what I have found is with the IP adapter the higher quality the images the better um it gets to be like the better your result and also when your images have like cool interesting textures it does really cool things as well. So uh, let's view these images here. We're gonna just pull in a bunch from the chat. AP art, we could try that one. Cats, thank you, I really like that. Daz, we're on fire today. This is cool. I like this. Boom. Boom. Okay, we're going getting a little goth too. And Dever, pretty. I like it. All right, let's start there. Oh. Wait, where? Boom, 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 boom. And then let's take a look at how this does. So um, let's start off with this anime character right here. And we're going to combine her with Dever's foresty looking cave background. So let's say 2D anime duty anime ba, 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 ba. in streetwear and the background is going to be Skateboarding um, background is back down. Background is an enchanted forest cave. Light rays and sparkles. All right, let's try it. And keep in mind, this is so we're doing 50 frames right now. Um, Let's queue it up. 
running through, it took the images. I haven't changed anything in the workflow. Like everything, all the numbers in the workflow are the numbers that are there when you guys download it. So let's see how this does. I, I can already tell from the, from the preview that it's going to be pretty cool. Someone get me, get me some type of, some type of animal. We have to carry on our, our furry theme, at least in one video here. That's pretty good, man. That's pretty good. So this is the low res one. So this is 521. I actually, my bad. I think um, it's supposed to be 512 by 896. That's my fault. Um, but this is the low res video. We see the complete character separation from the background. This was the character. And that's what it gave us. And let's just see what this looks like upscaled it's only going to take a minute or so so character and background it's pretty i think that's pretty spot on and the fact that we're now able to have the complete control over the character and the background it to me is just like so powerful Okay, I really like this one, and I really like this one. And cats. So cats in Discord asked, so the prompt is to describe the image. Yeah, so um, it's not even necessarily that you want to use the same prompt that you use to create your image. Your prompt should just be reinforcing what it's looking at in the IP adapters. So the most like straightforward way that you can just describe what your images actually are and not so much the prompt, um, it'll just help nudge it in that direction. But as Phil pointed out last week, um, the prompts are becoming increasingly less important, but it's still a skill you want to have. Because the better you can prompt, the better you can actually like really push it in the direction you want it to go, even with the help of the IP adapters. So our upscale is almost done. We're going to queue, we're going to queue up our next one, which I actually really want to try the alien with the cherry blossoms. Yes, Dever. Yes. Yeah, I know Twitch, you can't see it, but we, we got we got a cat skateboarding that we're gonna try here in a second. Uh this alien. Um 3D Alien. I've also found that putting the word sculpture instead of like person, um helps it step further away from m giving it human elements. So I've actually been using the word sculpture a lot in my prompt. Um, 3D alien sculpture skateboarding background is... Background is... A beautiful moonlit lake with cherry blossoms and we'll keep the the light the light rays and sparkles so okay here is our first video boom look how crispy the upscale came out and look how fast that that took us because we're on lcm oh wait wait we had a good recommendation in twitch let me we cancel that. We're going to do the 
we're going to try to throw backlit in here. Um, we'll say backlit 3D alien. Yeah, we'll try that. Thank you, Ludwig von Beethoven. Appreciate you. And let's see how our alien comes out here. Ooh, AP, I like that one. Wait, we got to grab the cat. We got to grab the cat because we're going to do the cat. Twitch, you see this? See this? this? This is the power of AI. This is what we can do now. You don't this is what you even all train for. This is this this is this is what we're training for. You don't you don't even have to you don't even have to torture your cat by putting it in its own little little astronaut suit. You can just use the power of and, AI to do it. And of course, uh, tomorrow in the stream, we will all learn how to prompt that. <laughs> Ooh, I like this. Uh, no, no, next next week. I, uh, next week, if I remember, next week. Next week. So, hey, um, guys, FYI, and I'll, I'll announce this at the end of the stream as well, but next week, Friday, we are actually starting to have a fifth streaming day, and it's going to be guest streams. So I'm going to be hosting it. We're going to be doing um, our usual thing the way that I do, but I'm going to... Oh, that's so cool. That one's so cool. Let's upscale that. I want to see it. Um, we're going I, i'm going to be bringing on a different guest who specializes in a different thing um every week starting next week friday same time as our thursday streams and yeah we're gonna just cover like different topics with different talented creators both from inside and outside the civitai community and as the streams get closer we'll announce who the who the guest that week is but we already have the next three weeks or so planned out beginning with next friday and next friday is none other than our very own dever who is in here every week and he is a prompting magician so he's going to teach us how to get our prompting right so i'm really excited for that next friday um yeah let's see what that one comes out to because dude that tell me tell, it's so it's so good that like, because you know, you know that if we put these two things in and with one IP adapter, and even if I prompted it, we would get elements of the background and elements of, of the person kind of like mixed in with one another. Whereas now we're just getting like straight background and straight character. May HD4. What's up? Thank you for joining us. And infrastructure me. I, I'm sorry. I can't read right now. But everyone who is like here for the first time with us on Twitch, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, damn. Yeah. I really like the way the alien came out. And I do like that someone pointed out it gave the alien the um, crane feathers as kind of part of its like head thing right there like you can see the feathers boom but the upscale is about to pop out so let's see what that looks like Ooh, the quality man is just yeah it's a huge difference between the upscale and the low res um both of those look really cool Let's turn even the low off. res is fire though. Even the low res is good, man. Um, let's try the cat. We gotta do the cat, and let's try to have the cat skating in the 1920s. This this will be a this will be an interesting one. So, um. Astronaut space cat skateboarding background is a 1920s park with 
no light rays and sparkles um, is a vintage 1920s park. And let's see it. So, and I'm also trying to keep the prompting very minimal so you guys can see exactly how powerful the double IP adapter is. So, and then also, um, just so we can see what VRAM is doing right now, uh, we're hitting 13 gigs of VRAM on this. And I'm pretty sure when we go through the upscaler, um, this jumps up to 14. So that's kind of what you can expect. Um, that means I can finally do it now, though. Yes. Yes, that means that Daz because is going I, to I be... Because I grabbed a 4070. Bro, this, this one's going to be dope. Um, AP art. I do 50 frames just because I work in round numbers, and that's just kind of what I've, what I've done. Um, and 50 frames is just like... It, yeah, it just it gives me the right amount of motion so I can actually tell how consistent the video is going to be. So I should probably use 48, but... It, it's whatever, man. That, that's all preferences. Because at the end of the day, I'm going to run the full video anyways, so the, the frame count is kind of irrelevant. Um, dude, look how, look how dope the astronaut cat is. And the vintage background. And okay, the, the VRAM is hitting 16. So um, in that case, if you want to upscale it, you would probably want to lower the upscale by number so it's upscaling it to a lower resolution or or um you would want to make your low resolution height and width lower so there's going to be a little bit of stuff you'll have to figure out if you're working with low vram especially since we're using two ip adapters and a mask you got to keep that in mind. This isn't really meant to be like a super low VRAM workflow, but this is considerably lower than if you're doing Animate Diff V3. Now, after the cat, though, what would happen if I ran it without a prompt? That is a good question. The, oh, okay, Dever. Challenge accepted. You know what? Let's run this image Dever just gave us without a prompt. And with a different background that's completely contrasted with it and see what happens. So we're going to use this, this thing, this praying mantis on a Segway. Is that no, on a two wheeler, whatever, whatever those things are called on. <laughs> And then we're going to use the, um, this background right here because these colors are very different. And we're going to take the prompt away entirely. So all it's using are the, like, the generic words, the bright cinematic lighting and all that kind of stuff. There's nothing describing the actual character here. And we'll cue it. And our high res cat. No, our high res cat looks good, man. Let me move this one to the back. And have our upscaled cat come to the front. That looks insane. Insane. It's total. I I think it totally doesn't know that it's a praying mantis. So after this runs, then we'll try the prompt and see if we can actually get the praying mantis in there. <laughs> yeah, the floating tree is super funny. Look, <laughs> oh, yeah. So it had no idea what to do with that character, Dever. But but it kind of nailed the background. 
but let's let's see let's see if we can get that to be a little a little closer um Sculpture of no, um, praying mantis sculpture and we'll actually wait this one up a little. Let's wait this one up and see if we can actually get her to be a praying mantis. Background is a Surreal river and mountains. Beautiful sunset. Let's see if we can get the praying mantis here. A very large. Okay, this will this will be a good um, a d a b test Dever. So we'll take whatever it gives me with this, and then we'll swap it out for the words you just gave me. And we will see the difference. Ooh, looks like we're getting, we're gonna get a praying mantis here. Or we're gonna get something. We're gonna get something. It might not be a praying mantis, but it's gonna be something that's not just a girl. So, let's see. Boom, okay. That's that's better. You know, that's better. So let's see with Dever's choice of words now. Jeru. My man. Coming through. Is is this a slug? Is this a slug? Or cursed shrimp. I like it. This will be the cursed shrimp. But it it looks like a slug to me. He's okay, always so coming through with the slug troll. <laughs> he's always coming through with the slugs. It's an inside joke, guys, because I worked on a music video where I had to AI two slugs getting it getting it on with one another. And I worked on it for like th three and a half months. All right, so. You see the difference in, so like, even though we're using the IP adapter and the IP adapter is strong, you still want to push it with your prompting. Now, Dever gave us a really hard image. Like, this is really hard because it's not in the shape of a person. It's not like it's, it's, it's hard, but the fact that we could even get it to separate like this is pretty dope it's pretty dope but alas we have to try the cursed shrimp slug and i need an i need a i need a i need a um a cool background for the shrimp slug guys i need a cool background just use the it, fire girl man as the background yeah why not? Okay, let's try it. Let's. You can turn it magical or cursed. Who knows? Okay, let's try it. Let's 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 see here. Let's try it. So this one is going to be a. Three D, sculpture, of a. Cursed. Space. Shrimp slug, skateboarding. That's what we're doing. Um, background is a flaming mystical forest. No, 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 because it has to actually be the the thing it has to actually be the thing but De i uh, we're i'll use your character right after this we're gonna we're gonna take this background that Debra just sent because i want to i want to see this 
And also, damn, now you guys are sending me good stuff. Boom. Boom. Background is on. Broken stone. Pathway. Dead trees. Overcast sky. I'm excited to see what this one looks like. And also, we're gonna we're gonna try something that someone suggested. Um, who was it that suggested the open pose? Uh, Walid, Walid. So we're gonna see what this gives us with the shrimp image, and then we're gonna turn depth off and only use open pose and see the difference. Um, into the fab. I have not. That that's something that I would like to see slash do, but um, there's no as far as I know, there's no simple, straightforward way to um prompt travel using the IP adapter images. So I'm not at least not like a a direct way where you can like keyframe it and have it change when you want it to change. Um, okay, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Let's see what happens to the shrimp when we take off, um, when we just turn depth off, period, and we just use open pose. Oh, uh, so he, that, that, was a good, that was a good thing. Just so no one gets, gets caught off guard by this. Um, if you just switch a control net, but you don't change anything else, um, it's not going, it's just going to run without changing anything. So see, it just said prompt executed in, in four seconds. You have to change one other variable. So we'll make this 51 frames. And now it'll do the full run. Um, and then somewhat, oh, Marvico in Discord said, is it possible to make it real time that alpha mask with, a sh with streaming data on touch designer or something? So, um, Marvico, if I were you, and if you are into touch designer, you should go check out um, Dot Simulate. And Dot Simulate has a Patreon for all of the cool touch designer stuff that he does. And he actually made something for touch designer called Stream Diffusion which allows you to use Animate Diff and Stable Diffusion in real time for visuals that you're generating in Touch Designer. So, again, his name is Dot Simulate, and you should go check him out. Ooh, ooh, that is... I mean, we, we kind of lost the skateboard because Open Pose doesn't know what to do with the skateboard, but instead it, she's skating on her, on her cursed sluggy tentacles you see this jeru you see this awesome is this what you wanted i think that i think that actually looks pretty good all things yeah. consider all things considering so okay we're gonna do um the flaming daz is flaming woman right now we're gonna see if we can get her to actually be on fire and we're going to put her I feel like being on fire in the middle of a lightning storm sounds about right. Let's do... Um, do you think you would like flaming or on fire more of a flaming of a female warrior on fire? I think flaming. You think flaming? I mean, in, in either case, she's just hot, right? Flaming background is a, is an epic lightning storm over A city, and we're gonna say 
lightning bolts. Boom, boom, boom. Bam. Oh, wait, do we turn depth back on? We want to turn depth back on. Cancel. The other nice thing about this workflow is it cancels pretty pretty quickly. That's that's always nice. Boom. Q prompt. Let's see. Any questions? Any questions? Boom, boom, boom. Fire. I've noticed it tends to be more static. Thank you, Engelstein. Good to know. Good to keep in mind. Engelstein said that fire tends to be more static and flaming tends to give you the actual like So what I do want to do, though, um, my favorite one so far that we got has been the cat. So before we sign off for the day and we kind of cap this out, I'm going to run the cat in the V3 version of the notebook just so you guys can see the difference. Because I also want to see the difference, too, between the cat in LCM and the cat in the Animate Diff V3 version. This looks like it's going to be cool. Hey. Okay, so let's upscale this real quick. I love how she's like skating on the flaming skateboard. On the clouds. And the clouds, yeah. I mean, she is labeled as a female ghost rider, so this makes perfect sense. And there's also like a city underneath her. So, okay, here's something to like, um, uh, so I have been, I've been using the word sculpture just because I feel like it helps get it to be like a, just a little more like textury and not so like the typical person thing that it spits out, but Ah, uh, what was I totally forgot what I was gonna say. For when you guys are using this workflow, the images that you're generating to throw in here, think about the perspective of the images you're putting in for the like aspect ratio of the video and what's happening in your scene. Because we have things like stable diffusion and we can generate our own images and we can use IP adapters and control nets to like really get the image we actually want you can you have so much control over the video you make now that it's unreal but there is some time spent on the front end figuring out the image like i have folders and folders and folders of images i've generated before i got the ones that really made the animation work so yeah um if you guys make cool stuff with this, please post those images on the model page on Civitai and tag us on social media so we can share it. So let's see what the upscale version of this looks like. Right about meow. Dude, that looks so sick. Like that, that literally is just the character from, you know, the image. Um, so cats, I try to keep everything um four by five or nine by sixteen, but but with that being said, I have used background images that were sixteen by nine, you know, wide and gotten really great results. So I try to keep it all the same aspect ratio so I can like predict what I'm gonna get a little bit better, but it's not necessary. And it's just like playing with it and experimenting. Now, um, let's try the cat in the V3 workflow, and then we're going to sign it off here. So let's take our cat. And again, this workflow is exactly the same thing. It's literally the same thing. Only difference is it's going to take just a little bit longer. So we had the cat, and we had, boom, we're going to say, 3D astronaut space cat. Let's 
skateboarding and let me say background is 1920s vintage park and we're going to run these 50 frames so we can see the difference with v3 When you use the upscale workflow with 4 time 4x upscaler, what is the best settings for the second case sampler so it doesn't completely alter your image? Um, that's something you just gotta play with, man. I I tend to only use the the high res fix, and then I take my videos, break them into frames, and throw them into a batch image to image in automatic to get it all the way up to um to the 1080. And I run that at a really low denoise strength at like 0.2 at a CFG of 7. So, yeah, but also for like some of these videos um, on the post, like I've taken the 768 version and then just ran them through Topaz to get the full 1080. And the quality on social media looks insane. So it really just depends what, how, how deep into it you want to go. Um, do you have issues with higher fix to animate V3 workflow? Because in the first, not LCM workflow, it always crashed for me in the end. Um, Walid, so what I will say again is the high res fix. <clears throat> if you have it set to bilinear, you should be good. The NN latent upscaler, even though it is amazing, um, it will cause you to crash and get a CUDA error if you're using just, if you're even just like one too many frames over. Someone asked me to zoom out so they can see the entire workflow. Creepy guy. Boom. That is what the whole thing looks like. And the, the PNG of this is on both of the model pages as well. So I really tried to condense this. I tried to keep it straight to the point with as little confusion and fluff as possible. If you guys go unplugging things and you go moving stuff around, uh, make sure you switch your comfy mode to spline to save yourself the headache. And even though this looks sloppier, um, it lets you see really where everything is plugged into. When you have the spaghetti mode into straight, the pipes tend to overlap each other, making it hard to see exactly where everything is going. Um, Sergius. Sergius. So, uh, Rife and Film are great. They just... So, I tend to stay away from the interpolation nodes just because I want to stay as true to the motion as possible because I tend to go back and forth between the actual video and the animation. And the interpolation um, can throw off the frame matching of the animated video with the real video. But if that's not important to you, then by all means, throw in a Rife node or throw in a film node. If you just type in film, this film VFI thing is amazing for interpolating your footage and smoothing it out just in comfy. And this would plug in just um in between your K sampler and your video combine just boom and boom but let's see what the cat looks like in this one so we can have a direct comparison um yeah man i hope you guys enjoyed this i hope you guys get some good use out of this i'm going to link both of these again right now so um twitch this one right here is the lcm workflow that we have been working with all day and discord same for you there is the direct link to it on my profile and then i will also give you guys the link to the v3 workflow if that is what you are into boom and let's see how our cat came out.
Okay, I think in this case, I actually like the LCM one better. Yeah, I actually like LCM Cat a lot better in this one. So again, that's also why I release both of these workflows, because sometimes I get better results with one than I do the other. So there you have it. There is our astronaut space cat skating in a 1920s vintage park. And we also got this flying tree in the background. But with that being said, guys, I'm going to put the workflow on the screen right here. Wait, someone asked, did you update the LCM workflow IP things that went connected? Yes, yes. This, oh, oh no, I didn't, I didn't update the, the last workflow. I didn't. That, my bad, my bad. I still have to do that. Sorry, I've been too busy with this. But guys, I really hope this was helpful. I hope you guys liked the workflows. I know that both of these have been game changers for the way that I've been able to create and the things that, I have been creating over the past two weeks since I've started to kind of figure this out. Um, there shouldn't be too many issues here. You guys just need to get the alpha mask and figure out how to, how to get that mask for your video and then down, download all those right models. This will be on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, rewind it as many times as you need so you can figure stuff out. We will be back next week, Thursday with another AI video and animation stream. And starting next week, Friday, also at 3 p.m. Pacific, we will be running a special guest AI stream. And every Friday after that, we are going to be having special guests who are really great prompters, image generators, Laura trainers, video makers, animators, just all the different things. I'm going to be bringing people on to share some sauce with you guys for what they do. So until next week, I am Tyler. Civitai.com. Please come follow us on social at Hello Civitai on everything. If you're not subscribed on Twitch, we appreciate you. Same thing on YouTube. Follow us on there so that you guys can get access to these tutorials and know when we upload something new. Um, yeah, man, I think we're good. And hey, share some of our Instagram stuff. We are like a hundred followers away from hitting 10,000 10, on Instagram. So Help me out there. I appreciate you all. I always have fun doing these streams. I hope this is helpful to you guys. I will catch you all next week. Twitch, it's been real. Thank you guys. Peace.